Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. I'm here with my wonderful sister Elizabeth. Hi. And we're gonna give you a quick tutorial on how to make a t-shirt keychain. This is a project that I came across when I was trying to find something that had a really short list of materials that I could easily find in my home. And I was really pleasantly surprised by how much I like them. I think they're kind of the perfect keychain because they're lightweight and they're easy to find in a bag or something like that. And they're washable, so if they get gross, it's another convenient thing. And they're also cheap, so you can make them as great presents. So the materials that you're gonna need are a t-shirt, ideally one that doesn't have seams on the side. I initially thought it was gonna be challenging to find t-shirts that don't have seams on the side, but it turns out most of them don't. Um, but if you do only have ones that have seams on the side, my tip to you would be to find a big one. The second thing you're going to need is one of these keychain rings. And the third thing you're going to need are scissors. If you also happen to have a pencil, some tape, and a surface to tape your creation down on, that would be the most ideal. So, go find your t-shirt and all your other stuff and come back. So the next step is you're gonna measure up an inch or eyeball up an inch and cut all the way across and you're gonna ha end up, if you don't have any seams on both sides, then you're gonna end up with a continuous loop and then you're gonna <laughs> cut that loop Then you're gonna end up with a long strip, so yeah. Yeah, and the minimum length that you want your strip to be is 24 inches. I would recommend, I think ours are something like 40 inches once we measure them out because we have men's medium shirts. Um, but yeah, if you have 24 inches, you're still capable of doing this project. It's just kind of harder once you get to the end to make all the knots. So the more length you have, the better. So And it doesn't have to be perfect, trust me, mine's not, so just <laughs> don't worry about it. I thought that it might have to be, but it doesn't. The nice thing about the t-shirt material is it's very stretchy and forgiving. So now that you have your strips cut, you're gonna move your t-shirts out of the way and you're gonna take the, <laughs> sorry, didn't mean to literally take it. <laughs> you're gonna take the strips that you cut and just give them a little stretch so that they kind of curl onto themselves and become a more usable material. All right. So now that you have your two strips, you're going to take your key ring and you're gonna take your first strip and what you want to do is you want to fold it in half so that you have a short piece that is about whatever length roughly you want your keychain to be and then a long strip that will be used to kind of create the knots on the outside. So once you have it wherever you want it, you know, you can have it be a short one, you can have it be a long one, it's up to you. You make a little loop at the top and you push it through the key ring and then you go through the loop and you grab the other two strands and pull it through. So then it's hooked on your keychain like that. You're gonna duplicate it on the other side and the key to duplicating it correctly is making sure that your um, shorter lengths are both touching each other in the middle. You don't wanna have like one on the outside and one in the center. You wanna have both in the center and you also want to make sure that you push through your key ring on the same direction that you did the first knot. So you do the same thing, you push through, make the little loop, grab the other two strands, pull it through, and then what you should be left with is two knots and your two little short ones are in the middle with the other two strands on the side like that. So. Once we have that done, we're going to show you how to make two different variations of this keychain. So the two variations that we have today are the simple square knot one and the spiral square knot. So both of these are going to be the same kind of process of starting them, so for whichever one you want to do, just start on the same way. And they're the same type of knot, but the difference between the two is that with the traditional square knot, you knot 
each side you go from left to right, left to right, but with the spiral you choose one side, like the left, and you just knot from the left over and over and over again, which creates that spiral pattern. So once you're all set, we'll start going. Alright, so once you have your key ring looking like this, with the knots, you're gonna, if you have tape, it makes it a lot easier to tape it down on the table the top and then down below and then if you also have it out of a pencil you're gonna want to just slide it under there so it creates a little bridge so I'm gonna show you guys first how to make the spiral knot version of the key ring and so what we're gonna do to make the square knot is we're gonna fold it over like this so that it kind of looks like a four and then you're going to take the other side and you're going to cross it over and then you're going to slide it under the two center strands and back up through the hole that was created by the first piece and then you're going to pull them all tight and so to make the spiral what you want to do is just the same exact knot from the same side so over under oops, sorry. <laughs> and through and you're just gonna keep going and eventually that you'll see the knot starts to spiral on itself and the strand that was once on the left side oops, lost my tape, moves to the right. So what you're going to want to do in that scenario is you'll just push this one under and you'll start working with this one but still from the left. So four, thank you. Over, under, through your loop. So that's the length that I want mine at, so I'm going to stop there, and Elizabeth's going to show you how to make... What you got to do the ending one? We're going to show how to make okay. a traditional one first, and once we do, we'll show you how to finish them all off together. Okay. Alright. You can be like, now we're making this one. Okay. Now we're going to show you how to make that one. So we're going to start off with the same kind of, you know square knot and we're going to go do that <laughs> yeah. and remember to pull it tight because that makes it look nicer and now instead of continuing with this one we're going to go, go on to this one which is the right side <laughs> And um, so we're gonna just do the same thing on the right side. If we can, if I can remember how to do it. So you make the triangle like that. Okay, yeah, so just like that. Yeah. It's just it's tricky. It's a little tricky, <laughs> but you got it.
Also, a kind of way to tell what side you're on is that what side the like kind of loop in front is on, because that's the side you're gonna use the yarn on. Yeah, if that makes sense. That's smart. You see how this one's like poking up more versus this one's pushing down. That's the one you want to use. Is the one that's pushing down. Did I do? It? You make. Right. I, I forgot for a second. Hang on, we go like this. <laughs> My know, brain's just gone. As soon as you stop, it's really hard to keep going. And I made the uh, foolish decision of wanting to make this one long, so <laughs> let's continue. Once you have your keychain at the length desired, what you're going to do to finish it off is you're going to take whichever strand is the longest, um, I think it's this one for you, yeah. and you're going to wrap it around the keychain twice so that you have a loop that looks like this, kind of has a cross in the middle, and then you're going to take it and you're just going to poke it through that loop facing downwards so it doesn't lay weird and you're just going to kind of hold the loop in place where you want it to be and slowly inch it snug by pulling on this piece and just kind of scooch it down to wherever you want to have it. This one's definitely off. Mm -hmm. uh, which does it matter which way you I don't think so. Crappy. So once you have them tied off at the ends, the next step is to decide how you want to finish them. So you can finish them either in these little spiral cuts where you cut the end pieces angularly so that they make this little curl, or you can cut them straight across like this one so that they're just cleanly chopped, or you can make little knots on the ends. I'm gonna do that probably. So, okay, cool. You can demonstrate how that's done. I'll make some angular cuts on this one, because why not? And I think everyone can understand how the straight cut one is done. So. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit tricky to keep the them from curling, so just be careful with your fingies. Yep. No chopped fingers, please. Looks like this one used to be a little shorter. 
So here are the finished products. Well, I'm not done. Yet. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, here are our finished products, guys. We have the ends finished off, and they are ready to gift to all of our relatives. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or anything you want clarified, please reach out to me. I'd love to answer any questions you might have. And if you end up actually following this and making one, I'd love to see how it turns out. So let me know if you have any input, and hopefully we'll see you here next week. Bye! Bye.